So, we've seen so far in this course how to multiply matrices, even exponentiate them. But what about division? Can we divide by a matrix? Well, let's see. If I'm going to go back to two by two matrices, so if A is a two by two matrix, A, B, C, D, um, with uh, A, D minus B, C not equal to zero, then the matrix, which I'm going to call A inverse, which is 1 over AD minus BC times uh, D minus B minus C A is an inverse for A in the sense that A inverse times A equals the identity and A times A inverse equals the identity. In case you can't see that, that's an A there. Okay, so let's just have a look at this. When I have a number, if I want to divide by that number, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that number, right? And the reciprocal x inverse is the number such that x inverse x equals 1. And I've already told you that the identity matrix is like the number 1 for matrices. So A inverse A equals the identity is the analog of you know, defining the reciprocal of a number. Um, okay, let's check this theorem. Uh, all we have to do is multiply the two matrices together and see what we get. So let's do it this way around, and the other way around will be an exercise. Uh, so 1 over AD minus BC, D minus B minus C, A times A, B, C, D equals 1 over AD minus BC times D, A minus BC. db minus bd all the way around uh, and then ca minus ac and then minus bc plus ad okay a bunch of stuff cancels these terms cancel and these terms cancel remember these ac b and d's they're all numbers they just commute with each other, don't need to worry about order. So this is zero, and this is zero, and this dA minus BC, we're dividing by the same quantity here, and the same on this diagonal entry. So overall we end up with one, zero, zero, one, which is the identity matrix. And the same is true the other way around. I'll let you check if you multiply them in the other order that you get the identity. So this is good because now if we have an expression like a, b equals c, and a is this a, and this is its inverse, then we can multiply on both sides by a inverse. And now a inverse a is the identity, so this is identity times b, but that's just b. So we get b is a inverse c. So it's really like dividing by a. However, you should be careful. You should never ever write 1 over a or b over a because it's not clear whether you're doing a inverse b or b a inverse right if these were numbers it wouldn't matter so you're perfectly justified in writing you know b over a if, if, if they were numbers but if they're matrices you need to distinguish between whether you're multiplying by the inverse on the left or you're multiplying by the inverse on the right so never 
ever write either of these two expressions if A and B are matrices. In this previous formula, the 1 over AD minus BC, you can write that because AD minus BC is a number. The other thing this is great for is solving simultaneous equations. So, um, for example, let's go back to our system of equations we had earlier on. Uh, x minus y equals minus 1, x plus y equals 3. This is a matrix equation 1 minus 1, 1, 1 times x, y equals minus 1, 3. Now this matrix here, if we call this A, let's compute A inverse. It's going to be, um, let's see, AD minus BC is 1 times 1 minus minus 1 times 1, so that's 2. And then, so what do we do? To, to get this inverse, we need to switch the signs on the two off-diagonal entries, so we're going to get 1 and minus 1, and we need to switch A and D over. But they're the same, so that doesn't do anything. So our A inverse is a half, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So if we now want to divide by this A, we're multiplying by A inverse on the left to cancel it off. And what we get is uh, x, y equals A inverse minus 1, 3, which is a half, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, times minus 1, 3. And that's a half. 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times 3. That's 2. And then minus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times 3. That's 4. So overall we get 1, 2. Which is indeed the solution we were expecting to get. So you can use this to solve simultaneous equations. Just multiply by the inverse. So multiply the vector of constants by the inverse of the matrix. And you're going to get the solution. In other words, AV equals B implies V equals A inverse B. So this inverse is really, really useful. It's a fantastic thing. Uh, and we'd really like to be able to generalize this theorem to higher dimensions, bigger matrices. So um, let's just make it slightly more formal. What is it we're trying to define? Well. Um, let N A be a square matrix, so an, an N by N square matrix. It's not going to make sense for non-square matrices. Um, so we say that A is invertible if there exists a matrix A inverse. Well, actually, let me not call it A inverse just yet. If there exists a matrix B such that uh, AB equals BA, uh, sorry, equals the identity matrix. Um, if such a B exists, then it's unique. So we, we're justified in just giving it a single name depending on A, and we call it A inverse. How do you see that it's unique? Well, suppose um, B and C are both inverses for A. Well then, if you look at the expression BAC, we can evaluate this in two ways. On the one hand, we can group together the B and the A. And because B is an inverse for A, that gives us the identity. So this is equal to C. 
And on the other hand, we can group together the A and the C, and because C is an inverse for A, this cancels and gives us the identity, so we get B. So B equals C overall. So this shows that there's only one inverse for A. The useful property of inverses, uh, which we can prove without further ado, lemma, um, if A and B are invertible matrices with uh, inverses A inverse and B inverse respectively, then the composition or the matrix product AB is invertible with inverse B inverse A inverse. So it's a bit like with transposes, when you invert a product, you end up inverting the two factors and sticking them in the opposite order. So proof AB times B inverse A inverse is, well, remember matrix mul multiplication is associative, that means we can wiggle the brackets around however we want. We can completely ignore the brackets. This is just A, B, B inverse, A inverse. The B inverse and the B cancel. And the A inverse and the A cancel and give us the identity. So you can see that this product here, B inverse, A inverse, is an inverse for A, B. And simply, you've got to check the other direction as well, but that's easy enough. If you multiply them this way around, the A's cancel first and then the B's. And that's why you've got to stick them in the opposite order, because if you didn't, you'd end up with an expression like A inverse, B inverse, A, B, and now you can't cancel the A's or the B's because A and B inverse don't have to commute with one another. So this is, is not obviously the identity. This is an expression called a commutator. This actually vanishes, or it, sorry, it becomes the identity if and only if A and B commute. So this is just an aside. This word invertible here, if you go back to the definition I said it, we say that A is invertible if there's an inverse. It's kind of important. Uh, we saw for two by two matrices, it corresponds to this expression, AD minus BC being non-zero. And you can see in the inverse, the formula for the inverse, there's a one over AD minus BC. So this is clearly important. If this number were zero, you couldn't divide by it and you wouldn't be able to write down an inverse. In the same way, not all numbers are invertible, right? If you just have a real number like zero, you might not be able to divide by it. So when we've talked about inverses, we're going to come back and talk more about this condition, AD minus BC equals zero and its generalization for bigger and bigger matrices, which is called the determinant condition. So the aim of the next video is to tell you how to find out the inverse of a matrix if I give you a matrix. So for two by two matrices, it's just this formula, but for bigger matrices, there's an algorithm for figuring out what the inverse is.